All right, should you have Search Partner Network enabled on your search campaigns? Well, that depends. So first, let's start with what the definition of search partners are. So we know Search Network is the actual google.com search engine that you type your you know search question in right that's going to include the google search network that's going to include images that's going to include maps that's going to include shopping right these are this is all owned by google so this would you know this would what you think of as google right and where you'll you would see ads from on search or at least search ads or shopping that would be on Google, right? That's the search network. Search partner network is non-Google owned. So this is non-Google websites, okay? And it says it says listings to hundreds of non-Google websites. I would imagine there's like thousands of, if not, you know, tens of thousands of non-Google websites it's showing on. It also can be park domains. It can be YouTube and it can be other Google sites. Now, you're reading this. This is like their whole definition. And you're like, wait, that's that's it? Right. It's super, super vague. So let's go into a few of the things I don't like about the search partner network, and then I'll get into when and when not to use it in your campaigns. Number one, I do not like, A, this, this definition of what it is, right? It's like, oh, it's just a bunch of non-Google websites you can show on. You get absolutely zero clarity when you have Search Partner Network turned on. You you have no idea where your clicks are coming from, right? So the Partner Network can include all of these other websites like ask.com and dog, dogpile.com. It can even include marketplaces, I believe, like walmart.com. However, you have no clarity or reporting on the clicks you're getting from Search Partner Network. And I'll show you what it actually looks like in a, in a real account, and I'll show you how to enable and disable as well. But I don't like that. And so you lose all of this clarity to it, right? The other thing I don't like, it's prone to increase a lot of what I would consider bot and spam traffic. So campaigns that have easy conversions, and that's what the campaign's been sort of built around. Easy conversion could be a 30 second phone call. It could be a very simple form to fill out, like what's your name and email, and there's no recapture or anything. It's just a very generic form fill. Those would be what I consider like weak, easy conversions, right? When you have that Search Partners is very prone to inflate your conversion data. It's like, wow, look at our performance here. But the reality is it's a lot of junky and downright probably fraudulent <laughs> uh, traffic that you're getting in regards to the quality uh, of that traffic from the Search Partner Network. Now, I did a video recently on how to stop spam and bot traffic. One of the recommendations I actually make there is if you're experiencing this and you'll know if you are, right? And you'll you'll see it in the, like, let's say you're running like lead generation and you have like a weak form field to fill out, you will you will see these spammy leads come through, right? One of my recommendations in that video is turn search partners off if you have it enabled. That video will be in the description below if you wanna go check out further uh, on that if you're just interested. Now, Search partners isn't always bad, right? And so you it, it will depend on the scenario of your campaign, which I will get into. The other issue I have with it, and this is a actual screenshot I did on LinkedIn. I hate LinkedIn. And so sometimes if I find interesting things there though, I will just sort of uh, take a quick screenshot of it. This is Mike Rhodes. If you don't know Mike Rhodes, he's like an OG in uh, the Google Ads world. He actually reposted a guy named Mike Ryan. Now, Mike Ryan, I don't really know him personally, but uh, I have seen his stuff before, so I have respect for his thoughts. He posted this, and I actually didn't know this. I've been doing this for over 10 years, and I didn't even know this, but he said, we had a client with a maximum bid of $2, but their average cost per click was way higher. Seg segmented by network, Google search network was 170, search partner network was $4. That's because the search partner network is completely independent bidding arm that doesn't respect 
your settings like max CPC. In fact, it optimizes towards cost per conversion, which implies that search partner network version of smart bidding doesn't support max conversion value bid strategy at all, let alone target ROAS bidding. Okay, that's you can pause and read this entire thing if, if you'd like. So this will obviously be popped up. But search partner network doesn't even respect the actual bidding sort of rules and definitions Google gives you. That only applies to Google owned properties and the search network itself. I had no idea about that until I saw that um, on LinkedIn. So even though I do, I even though I hate LinkedIn, I still check it, you know, maybe once a week and then I'll scroll the feed and I find interesting and good stuff like that. So I'm glad I, I did find that. And I wanted to bring that to your attention as well, because that was new to me as well. And it, it made me look at search partner network in an even worse of a light than how I looked at it before. Okay. So I, I just dogged on search partner network. Why would you even use it? Right here is when you don't use it, here's when you use it. You don't use it, and I talk about this in all of my trainings, you do not start with search partner network turned on if you're building a brand new search campaign. Start with search network only, get that campaign dialed in on high quality conversion data. So if you're e-commerce, that's going to be purchases. And if you're lead generation, more than likely that's gonna be sales qualified leads, or actual closed deals if you have the volume to do that. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the details of that. I've got plenty of videos on this YouTube channel for you to go watch some of those trainings. I have a community called PPC Copilot where I actually mentor, train, and have all my course material in there and people ask me questions in a weekly Q&A. So if you wanna go deeper down the rabbit hole of all of, all of my trainings and, and, and my thinking and all of this, go check that out or go check out my other videos on this YouTube channel, uh, plenty of content for you to learn. So if you have campaigns that are new or even if they're not new, but you don't have them dialed in yet, do not have search partner network turned on. You'll prevent all of this crap then that you would have to deal with. Now, let's say you have a campaign, you have it dialed in, you're, you, you're using smart bidding like T ROAS or TCPA and you have high quality conversion data that you've trained those campaigns on, then search partner network is fine to test. Why? Because the algorithm has been trained on high quality conversion data. So now I'm happy to flick search partner on knowing that that campaign and Google knows that I need A, if I'm e-commerce, actual purchase traffic, and if I'm lead generation, actual SQLs or closed lead traffic, right? So I can't just open the floodgates of search partner network to low quality traffic because it will not convert because I've now trained my campaigns and they're dialed in on the search network on high quality conversion data. So that is when I am absolutely okay testing search partner network. Now, let me hop into an account and I'll just show you where you find search partner network data, how to look at it, how to enable it, or how to disable it. Okay, I'm inside an actual account. Now, most of the names of the campaigns and stuff are gonna be blurred out, but here is a campaign, search campaign. You'll see Google search network, and then you're also gonna see search partners here. Now, how did I even get here? I use this segment setting here, and then you go to network with search partners. This is going to show you then if you have search partners turned on or not. You'll notice this is a search campaign as well. Again, naming names will probably be blurred out. You'll notice search partner network does not show. That's because it is turned off, right? So this campaign, it's turned on. This campaign, it's turned off. And you can easily see it from this view, at least through the time frames that you're looking at, right? Now, how do you turn this on or off? You just go into the campaign settings, and by the way, if you're building a brand new campaign, Google's gonna to wanna to force you into it. Don't do it. You can turn it off through that setup. I have videos on how to set search part or how to set search campaigns up on this YouTube channel. So go check those out. But here in the campaign settings, just under networks. And then here we've got the search network, right? Ads can appear near Google search results and on other Google sites. So this right here include Google search partners. This is this little box that you check blue or not. This is how you turn it on or off. So all you have to simply do is turn this off 
and then you would hit save. Now on this account, on, on this campaign, I'm actually okay having search partners turned on here for this search campaign. The others it's turned off because we've tested. So again, test, when you turn it on, actually test and make sure does this make sense? You're going to want to give it like, you know, probably 30 days of a time frame when you turn it on and make sure the performance there is good. Again, only do that if you have high quality conversion data in an already high performing dialed in search campaign.